This is a first light test of a brand new Bilchev SSQ-ST neon filled plasma tube. It has 25 centimeter side wires attached and this will be the first time the tube has been lit. We'll start off at low voltage and see what happens. This is 57 volts. Modulation frequency is 5 kilohertz. The tube appears to be operating nicely. At this point we are drawing a little less than 0 0.9 amperes. We we'll go up to 76 volts. 95, 114, 133 volts. 133 would be the normal operating voltage. At this point we're drawing about 1.25 amperes. The current the tube draws is going to change. It will increase as the tube warms up and the gas pressure increases. Right now everything looks perfectly normal. The tube appears to be operating uh, just fine. Now that the tube has been running for a few minutes, there's a very slight purplish glow around the outside of the central discharge. It's not apparent in the video because the video doesn't show it very well. The camera is not responsive to that color. Anyway, this is normal operation caused by driving gas out of the wall of the tube where it's heated under the electrodes. The getter will clean that up after some period of time. We're going to raise the power to the tube to force the gas out faster. We're now running at 152 volts. Current of 1.35 amperes. Peak amplifier voltage is about 540 volts. 540 volts peak, which is normal for that operating sequence. It looks like there's a little gap right in here where the discharge is not occurring. That is caused by the fact that the rest of the discharge is so intensely bright the camera stops down and it looks as though the gas is not glowing but in reality it is. Uh, you can see the little gap there uh, with your naked eye if you look. Because we're looking at a slight angle to the tube, we're just slightly on the left side of the tube, the gap at the right hand side of the electrode is not visible. It's covered up by the glow behind the electrode. If I manually stop down on the lens and I can't do that. Oh wait, maybe I can. Let's see here. No, I can't. Thought I could change that while the camera's running, but I can't do that. I've got to uh, change that um, setting with the camera shut off. Anyway, so far it's working well. We do have some purple in the tube, but not much. We'll let it continue to run for a while. Here I've shut the power down almost to nothing. You can see the purple glow in the tube. This is before the tube is fully ionized and this is uh, caused by oxygen in the tube. And as I say, the getter will take care of that as the tube ages. We're going to raise the power a little bit and see what happens. At this point more of the neon is ionized but you can see that there is still purple glow in there. Uh, and that just kind of comes out as a a whitish color around the uh, in the, in the video here. It doesn't look quite right. Anyway, that's normal for the tube. That's what it's going to look like until it's run for an hour or so. I'm going to raise the power again, and we'll let it run for a while to clean up the tube so it'll be in first class shape. This is normal for startup on a brand new tube.
the tube has been resting for a while so it's cooled down. Now we're going to power it back up and we may see some interesting effects in the beam. Definitely interesting. Again, this is typical of a new tube when it's first turned on. Okay, as you can see, first it came on in high brightness. Now you can see the glow along the side wires. The tube's not fully ionized. It needs to be operated at a higher voltage at this point, so we're going to raise the voltage. This is 38 volts. 57 volts is the minimum recommended, and there we are at 57 volts. And the tube will go through some interesting gyrations for a while. Uh, this indicates that the tube has not been run long enough at high power to really clean it up. But uh, this is perfectly normal, and this will go away after a while. So we'll just let the camera run and watch this for a while. Now if I raise the power level, we can force it into a more normal looking wave where the uh, beam is just a straight line and not uh, wandering back and forth. By the way, the faint dotted line that you see moving around in the tube is the reflection of the beam from the opposite side of the tube wall being bounced back at us. And up above, you can see two lines in the tube mounted above it, which is an SSQ BAT plasma tube, and that's the reflection of the uh, main beam off both sides of the tube wall from the bat tube. All right, let's raise the power some more, see if we can clear this up. But you notice now that the color is a beautiful neon orange, so it's, uh, the getter has done its job and is cleaning the tube out. Let's go to 76 volts. Still an interesting pattern, but a more solid line, not as much breaking up in the dots. By the way, the modulation frequency is still 5 kilohertz, and this is 50% duty cycle. I must say this is one of the more interesting displays that I've seen in an SSQ ST tube. Right, raising the power to 95 volts. Typically, the higher you go in voltage, the more stable the wave becomes. I believe part of the reason we're seeing this is because the side wires change the electric field distribution in the tube. It's not directly from one electrode to another, but it's partially orthogonal, so that changes the display that you see. The number of steps that you see in the wave will be proportional to the ion velocity in the tube divided by the frequency that the modulation is uh, being applied to the tube. If you change modulation frequencies, you'll change the number of steps and the appearance of the waveform. The tube is being run here at 152 volts and um, we're going to run it at fairly high power again to heat the wall up and clean it up so we can get the tube a little more stabilized. Now, even though it's, interest, it's uh, doing some interesting displays, the current is stable all the time through the tube. The current is always uh, constant. It doesn't seem to vary as the tube goes through these interesting gyrations in color and uh, beam pattern. So it makes it easy to set up the amplifier because the uh, tube presents a constant load to the amplifier. So we're going to let it run at this uh, power setting for a while and then uh, proceed with our tests. The tube has been turned off for about two hours, so the getter should have had time to work, so we're going to power it back up again. Yeah, let's turn on the amplifier and see what happens.
that's 57 volts and as you can see the tube now comes up with a normal looking beam very nice bright intense discharge uh, looks good current is good voltage is good everything works fine so the tube has cleaned itself up nicely and it's ready to go and let's check the power levels and make sure everything is okay 57 volts okay 114 volts the tube is cold so the voltage readings are slightly low Well, not very much. The test tube, nominal test tube, is 1.15 amperes. This one reads 1.3. I'm sorry, 1.13 amperes. So it's very close. In fact, it's stabilizing, and I imagine very shortly it'll be up to normal power. Let's boost it up to full maximum safe voltage, 171 volts. Running about 1.4 amperes, and that gives us a peak power of about 430 watts to the tube. So that's the peak power. Of course, it's 50% duty cycle, so the average power is half of that, or about 215 watts, which is the heating power uh, that would heat the tube up. So the tube is looking very good. Now, this is a test made with the side wires in place. I'm going to repeat the test with the side wires off and see what the difference is. But right now, the tube lights very easily at 57 volts. Uh, low voltage setting. Let's go back down low again. In fact, right now, it's lighting at 38 volts. Um, the waveform isn't the best, so I wouldn't recommend that. All right, one point, I'm sorry, 0 0.8 amps. And that was, that's looking good. So the tube is working fine now that it's cleaned up a little bit. I think uh, that was probably about all it needed. We'll run it some more at high power though here and let it get hot again and see if we get any more dis gas discoloration in the tube. Right now it looks very good. It's nice and clean and normal neon orange glow. Everything looks fine. I uh, will let this run for about a half an hour and then proceed with the tests.